Okay, good morning. Today on the 50 pound brain, we've moved our operation to the catacombs of the salt mine because you wouldn't even know that it was a Utah day. Looks more like Seattle outside, cold and wet and rainy. So we're gonna attempt to get brake lines plumbed on the Triumph today and uh, emergency brake cables. So let's get started. First things first, we have to put in the emergency brake cable stuff, which comes from here. And it runs, the cables, you got a cable that runs from here, from this turnbuckle to here, and then one to the opposite brake. And we put that in first so that, That's what I gotta figure out. I gotta try and find a picture. Once again, didn't see this thing come apart. So we know where to run our hard lines and avoid all the emergency brake cable junk. All right, so this turnbuckle thing goes in this hole. And then I'll have to figure out how the cables actually route. And it's not so much a problem of, I know where they go left and right, but how the cable gets from the handbrake, which I think that's what this bracket here is for. So I think it sits something like that. But this hole, these threads uh, are pretty tight from powder coating. So I need to make a thread chaser, which I've done using just a regular old bolt if you take it and flatten the sides on two or three sides, it's a very good thread chaser because it gives all the junk that's in the threads a place to go. It's not a tap. It won't cut new threads, or in steel it wouldn't. It might in aluminum, you could get away with it. But uh, it does go, does work well for just chasing junk out of existing threads. So that's what we're gonna do first. Okay, get ourselves a nice big glob of grease. Most of it is gonna stay on the outside. I don't think that turnbuckle mount goes in as far as this bolt did, but. But we got all the gunk out of it. There's enough gunk there to fill in the flats so now should be better they make a felt I don't really know I guess this is just a weather seal but felt doodad to go here Clean off all my threads. I'm going to use this grease like I own the factory. 
because it will make it a whole lot easier whenever I have to take this thing back apart for something. And I will. It usually works out the things I say, oh, this, this won't come back apart. That's the first thing to come back apart. It is, this is bent for some reason. So I'm wondering if that goes like that. But that would put that awful low. Even if we put it right there. I don't think that's right. Hmm. We will see. According to this picture, that's how it goes. I don't know, we'll have to see. But yeah, it does look like that bracket. I think this is the bracket on the axle. So I don't know. And put another felt thingy. Let's just take that washer off on here. I don't know, I might not be able to spin it around. Yep. When we're done, it needs to be right there. So it needs to stay right there, right now. Put some more grease in there because you never had enough grease. I guess it'll come up from here and angle up. I'm just, I was afraid of it chafing on the axle, but I guess it'll be okay. Yep, so this one will have to go there to clear the, clear the diff, diff cover, and then this one will come here. So with all that mess set, now we can run our hard lines. So the reason I brought you along today really was to show you how this thing, the Eastwood brake line flaring tool, not a sponsor, how well it works. Because I believe the hard lines that I have are for a Lockheed brake system and not a Girling. And so all of the hard lines so far on the rear axle seem to be too long. So we're going to chop them off and reflare them just like the factory did I don't know, a thousand years ago whenever they built these cars. But uh, yeah, let's get to it. This thing is super awesome. Okay, so here's the original flare. Let me turn my light here. Hopefully they don't blind the camera. Here's the original flare that I got from wherever the previous owner, Big Fred, 
got these lines. Rule number one, don't forget to put your fitting on before you start flaring. And I can just say, been there, done that. And once we cut off our tube, fitting's still there. We have to clean up the inside. Use this thing. Okay, so we got our line, got our fitting. Have it protruding out of the dies a little bit. Operation Zero just flushes everything up. Flip this over. Crank this dude down. And I mean hard. <clears throat> Do Operation One, since we are doing 3 16 line. Operation One bubbles it out. Operation Two completes the inner flare. And it is just that easy. You see it? Clean up the face a little bit. But yes. So I guess I do own the brake line factory. Okay, so I did the first one, now it's your turn. You try this one. I've already got it all prepped for you. Oh, you want me to do it again? Okay, let's do that. Operation zero. Everything squared up. Got our fitting. Okay, we're good. Okay, square. Crank it down. Flush. Looky there. But ow. I'll do a little bit of cleanup on it. With this thing. I don't know, where's the camera? Right there. It cleans up the cone. Okay, we are good. Okay, so we're done with the back. I don't know if you can see. It goes in there. Is it kind of ghetto looking? Yeah. But it's not hitting anything. It'll do the job. Here's my disclaimer. Once I put the body on this thing, there may be a reason why those lines were so much longer, but as of right now, I can't tell why they would be. So other than they were for the other style brake system, which routed a little bit different. The wheel cylinders were placed differently on the backing plates. So there's a lot of other variables going on, but we'll see. And if so, I'll get new brake lines because these have just about work hardened enough from bending and straightening and rebending. Now let's move to the front. So before we put the caliper on, we've got to deal with this. I don't know if you can be able to see it. There's some nasty wiggle in here in the bearings. So hopefully they just need to be cinched down better. So let's see what's going on. Okay, get the cap off. Let's see what's going on in here. I'm hoping. Well, this is done nicely. This is the first time I've been in here with these. Go. 
Might even be able to reuse that. We'll see. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Let me go get a big adjustable. Okay. Show you what we had to do on aircraft. <sighs> so what we had to do for seating bearings. Spin the wheel as we were tightening the axle nut. See, that turns really nice. There's a little bit of wobble in it still. Yeah, that's no wobble now. Afraid this will be too much drag. Well, they're too loose. Let's see. See, that's got. Turns nice. I don't like the wobble. I think what'll happen. Once those bearings break in, it'll run a lot nicer. Let's see if we can reuse this. go wobble free now these aren't quite the right caps I don't think well maybe they are okay yeah they just fit a little differently than I'm used to That'll do, donkey, that'll do. Tell you what. The car itself doesn't weigh anything, but all its parts weigh a million pounds. This caliper is all cast iron. Let's see, is this the right side? Yep. Okay. Try and keep the shoes in. Actually, I think I have new ceramic shoes for this, but these may be ceramics as well. Okay. See, at least on this one, the bleeder's up, unlike those back brakes. These bolts look like they've seen better days. I may even get some new ones. Yeah, these threads are kind of doinked. I think it's because they're not. This may be Whitworth threads. 
And these are SAE threads, which are very, very close, but not exact. And in most applications, it's just fine. But if all the hardware that's playing is hardened, then yeah, I could see where it could be a problem. Yeah, it would have been nice to see this thing come apart. But it is what it is. We can we can make this happen. So now we've got the caliper on. And the line that goes to here. We got these two brackets. This is what I was talking about a second ago, which I may or may not edit that out. Just since you couldn't see a single thing I was doing. Um This hose has to go here because if it went here in a hard left turn, that thing would be a guitar string. And that is just BAD. So I don't know what all these brackets go to. I was and I was saying on the last segment, and like I said, I'll probably edit out since you couldn't see what I was doing. I wish I would have liked I wish I would have could have wish I would have could have. I wish I would have seen this thing come apart. It would have been a whole lot nicer to put back together. But, as they say, it is what it is. So, and I gotta find a line, hard line that goes from here to there. It is a beautiful Seattle day today. Rainy and cold and foggy. That's why we're working in the shop. Okay, so we have two caliper bolts look like this. The other two that are not the original OEMs. These are OEMs. Notice the shank on it. The other two that were in those calipers were replacements that were threaded all the way up. And that's no good on a disc brake caliper. So I went to Ace Hardware got some grade eights with a shank but as you can see they're a little too long but the shank's good so we're going to turn these babies down we're going to make our own bolts so here we go Yeah, I just sawed it off, the rest of it off with the saw, with the hacksaw. Now we're just going to clean up this front. toasty which I guess is not surprising One down, one more to go. And there you go. Two more caliper bolts. I just gotta make the second one. This is how I should have done it the first time. I just changed the bit on this dude to a new one.
Vegas. And just finish it up. It is right there. All right. Then we can come back here and clean it up. One little issue on our, where's the camera? Our starting thread right there might be a little ugly. We're gonna see. Well, it started. I think we'll go hit both these new bolts with the on the wire wheel, and uh, I think that'll smooth them up. Like butter. Oops. So yeah, we're gonna swap out this. This is what I was saying about the full threads. Let me zoom in a little bit. So the problem with full threads versus a shank, especially in, a, in an application like this, is there's a lot of torque on the caliper when you apply the brakes. And what happens when you have threads is these threads will eventually mash down to where they're they kind of form a shank, but it's not the same diameter. And then you end up getting a little bit of slop in your caliper. That's why the, these bolts are shanked from the get-go, to take up all that. Bam. Oh, you know what? What do we need to put on our bolts? Andy C. Well, we put on everything. I'm gonna see if these will thread all the way down without a lock washer, but I don't think they will. And I really don't wanna run them without a lock, some kind of locking mechanism, just because they are calipers. Actually, let me turn this 
this out, so. Yeah, it's bottomed out. So we need some kind of lock washer just so we get full thread engagement and it tightens it down. I don't think I have any. So, well, we'll put them in just the, enough to hold the caliper. That way it gets the caliper off the garage floor. These are the same size? Close enough. These are, yeah, these are Whitworths. So I don't think they're a 9 head. Yeah. Whitworth, I should just probably make two more of these bolts and be done. But I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to put both Whitworth bolts in one caliper and both grade eights that we just made in the other. So that way. At least we don't have a mixed match of hardware, even though it's going to use the same tooling. We've got four strength bolts, and that's good. So I'll show you what happens. Let's see, where's the camera? Let me wipe this off. Yeah, that kind of mangles them because they're give or take the same, but just different enough to do that. So I'll go get it my tap. Tap out the caliper mount. Okay, so here's what we got accomplished today so far. The calipers are installed, except for they're not tightened because I need to get lock washers for the bolts. The brake line's on, did a junction block. This one's done. And that caliper's done. I retapped the bolt hole for our new SAE screws, bolts. Back's all done. The only thing I have to do now is get the line that goes from here all the way back to that hose right there. And I think that's in my storage unit. So what keeps me from going over to the storage unit and finding that line is it is completely full with these kids from church that are moving back to Florida stuff so uh, if I did find the line I don't know that I'd be able to get it out without bending it up not that I'm not gonna bend it up anyway but so I'll just wait I still got a lot accomplished today um, I could later on this week drop engine and transmission in and then, uh, then we'll really be cooking with gas. So we'll see, but it's coming together. Before you know it, the body will be sitting on this thing. And we'll be out jumping stuff. All right, uh, thanks for watching.